Hi, this is Mandos Perlakis, and this is video 22.2.2 .2 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video presents an algorithmic approach to instant restenosis. The first consideration in a patient who presents with ISR is whether there is an indication for coronary bypass graft surgery, and also whether the patient is a good candidate for coronary bypass. This is an example of a patient who presents with three vessel disease. There is instant CTO in the LAD. There is also instant CTO in the obtuse marginal branch. And there is a de novo CTO in the right coronary artery. Patients like this with highly complex native coronary artery disease, especially with occlusive instant restenosis in two vessels, are best served by coronary bypass graft surgery if, of course, it is feasible and they are good surgical candidates. The second consideration is whether the patient has occlusive, meaning total occlusion, instant restenosis, and if so, whether crossing of the CTO is feasible. We know that patients with uh, de novo and instant CTOs have similar success rates in the current era. However, during follow-up, patients who have instant CTO have higher risk of MACE and higher risk for repeat restenosis and need for revascularization. We also know that if the occlusion extends beyond both edges of the stent, the success rates are lower than if the occlusion is more narrow, limited within the stent or within one edge of the stent. Sometimes when we try to close these occlusions, the wire may go outside the previously placed occluded stand. And in these cases of extra stand uh, wiring, then the new stand may actually crush the pre-placed stand and provide a good result with acceptable rates of restenosis. If we're able to cross through the stand or for non-occlusive instant restenosis, a key parameter is to perform intravascular imaging to understand the mechanism of instant restenosis. Angiography can also help, especially when we use techniques that uh, enhance the visualization of the stent, like the clear stent and the stent boost. However, intravascular imaging with IBUS or OCT can provide important insights. Most importantly, the differentiation is between stent under expansion and uh, the formation of neointima hyperplasia or neoatherosclerosis. And this actually forms the Waxman classification of instant restenosis that breaks ISR down to five categories. The first one being mechanical, either with underexpansion or stent fracture. The second one being biologic, with either neointima hyperplasia or neoatherosclerosis with or without calcification. Third being a combination of mechanical and biologic. The fourth are the occlusive, the CTO ISR. And the fifth one is with multiple layers of stents, in which um, repeat stent placement is usually not desired. So, based on intravascular imaging, then the question is on the mechanism, and if it is a mechanical problem, it can be stent under expansion or stent fracture. If it is stent under expansion, the next question is whether the stent can be expanded. This is an example of under, an under-expanded mid-RCA stent. Even in geographically, we can see that the stent is not well expanded in this segment. This is the algorithm for in-stent balloon and dilator lesions. The first step is to perform multiple high-pressure balloon inflations. If it doesn't work, use a plaque modification balloon, like the Angioscout, the Chocolate, the Scoreflex, the Blimp, and the Cutting Balloon. Third step is to use intravascular lithotripsy. Fourth, to use the SIS OPN very high pressure balloon. Fifth, to use laser, often with simultaneous contrast injection. Sixth, to do atherectomy, either orbital or rotational, with orbital um, being avoided for fresh stents, but is perfectly fine for older stents. Number step number seven is to do extra plaque or extra stent lesion crossing, as we saw in the previous IVUS. And eighth is to perform coronary bypass. And intravascular imaging remains critical through all the steps to confirm that adequate stent expansion has been achieved. In this particular case, we used laser with simultaneous contrast injection. Rarely, there can be a cavitation effect and formation of bubbles, as was the case here. And this resulted in good expansion after 
post-dilatation with a balloon, and a nice final result, both in geographically and also with intravascular ultrasound. This is the other type of mechanical failure, which is stent fracture. This is seen as a gap between the stent. Here the distal segment is far away from the proximal segment. And it can be of various types. The typical treatment is with repeat stent placement, or if that fails, with coronary bypass graft surgery. Moving on to the other types of uh, restenosis, the non-mechanical but the biologic, which is new intima or new atherosclerosis. This is an example of a saphenous vein graft that had a, a new intima formation, as we can see from uh, intravascular imaging using optical coherence tomography. There is a large amount of NIH within the previously placed stand into the saphenous vein graft in this lesion. So what to do? It depends on whether this is the first episode or recurrent episode. If this is the first episode, then typically treatment is with drug eluting stents or drug coated balloons. Multiple trials here compare various strategies. And what was seen in a large meta-analysis of 10 RCTs called Daedalus is that for DES in stent restenosis, drug eluting stents provide slightly lower a risk of a repeat stent failure compared with drug-coated balloons and are therefore preferred for first episode of instant restenosis of drug eluting stents. However, when it comes to bare metal instant restenosis, DS and drug-coated balloons provide similar results. This is an example of a first episode of instant restenosis of the right coronary artery. OCT shows neointima hyperplasia very similar to what was seen previously in the saphenous vein graft that was extending further back into the proximal RCA. What was done in this case is implantation of uh, two additional drug eluting stents with a nice final result. There is controversy whether using a different drug eluting stent may provide an advantage over using the same drug eluting stent, but there is no definitive answer about this at this time. If, however, this is not the first episode, but there are already two or more layers of stents, then treatment depends on whether this happens on a native coronary or a saphenous vein graft. If this is in a native coronary artery, then the treatment is often with brachytherapy or with drug-coated balloons. DCBs are not currently approved by the FDA in the U.S. for coronary use, whereas brachytherapy is. The brachytherapy is not perfect. The two-year TVR in a meta-analysis was 29%, so there is still a risk of restenosis. However, it is the best treatment currently available and FDA approved. This is an example of a patient who had a recurrent restenosis of the proximal RCA with multiple layers of stem and underwent brachytherapy with off-label use of a peripheral impact falcon balloon. These balloons are extremely bulky. These are all three five balloons, very hard to deliver, and you can see it could barely be delivered in the proximal RCA. However, it was successful, and then the patient did well without recurrent restenosis for two years. This is another example of instant restenosis in a patient who had two layers of stents in the right coronary artery and brachytherapy seven months prior. There is a significant neoinima hyperplasia within the RCA stents. In this patient, we used uh, a more deliverable drug-coated balloon, the Boston Scientific Ranger balloon, that uh, because it is a 0.018 balloon, could be delivered down the mid-right coronary artery through Nate Friend's L1 guide, and that provided a good result with uh, minimal residual stenosis. So, here is uh, the last step if we have a saphenous vein graft that has recurrent instant restenosis, the next question is whether we can treat the native coronary artery, which often is a CTO. This is an example of recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft with multiple layers of stents. In this case, the canalization of the native coronary artery can provide better long-term results, although it is difficult. Here there is a lot of diffuse disease and uh, occlusion CTO distally. This was successfully crossed. And then the saphenous vein graft was actually occluded since the vessel now was filling through the native right coronary artery. So this is the 
algorithm for approaching instantaneous stenosis that provides uh, seven steps that can help determine the best treatment for a patient presenting with ISR. This helps triage the various treatments that range from coronary bypass graft surgery to PCI with direct looting stents, drug coated balloons, or brachytherapy, or performing PCI of the native coronary artery in case of saphenous vein graft instant chronic total occlusion.